Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Joe Salmanese. I'm the president of the Human Rights Campaign, the nation's largest gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender advocacy organization. I want to thank you all for coming today. And on behalf of the Human Rights Campaign, my heart goes out to the Virginia Tech community and to all the friends and family members who lost loved ones yesterday. A tragedy like this defies explanation. When senseless acts of violence erupt, it is hard to find meaning and it is hard to find comfort. So it is fortunate today that 220 faith leaders have gathered here. And it is my hope that as they walk the halls of Congress, they will be able to provide some special comfort to those who are suffering. In times like this, our religious leaders can serve as the bedrock of our community. And while those gathered here today came for a different reason, I know that their presence will provide aid. The people around me this morning know that we are all God's children and that through tragedy we can find inspiration and strength. And in times like these, it can be inherent goodness that comes shining through. I would now like to turn the podium over to my friend Harry Knox, the director of HRC's Religion and Faith Program. Let me add my word of welcome to you. Uh, we are all this morning grieving with our friends and colleagues in Blacksburg, Virginia. Uh, among us today is Reverend Kelly Sisson, who is the pastor at Glade Church, United Church of Christ in Blacksburg. Uh, her people ask her to stay here just long enough to be with us this morning and then to come home. And she is doing what, they're, what they've asked of her to do. So if we can just take an unusual moment for a press conference, this group cannot be gathered and not pray for the folks in Blacksburg. So I've asked Bishop John Selders, uh, pastor at Amistad United Church of Christ in Hartford, Connecticut, to lead us just for a moment, please. Can we join in a moment of prayer? Gracious Almighty, ever-loving, ever-caring spirit of life. As we have gathered at the foot of this most honored and distinguished hall, we come with sad hearts. We come with bowed down heads and we come understanding that something tremendous, extraordinary and tragic has occurred. And so, oh God, now we call upon you have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. We pray for those who have been affected by this tragedy, those officers and officials of the university, those teachers and faculty, those students and parents, that entire community there, we ask you, O oh God, to be present with them. Let the spirit of comfort, let the spirit of of comfort come. Speak peace, speak counsel, speak love. Thank you that while we are here and while you are here with us, you are also there with our friends and family. Thank you, sweet spirit of life. Amen. Just a word of explanation about what we'll be doing this morning. We have eight speakers, which is unusual and too many, and they promised to talk for about two minutes each, so it won't be a burden. But we wanted you to see the diversity of the faith uh, uh, traditions that are represented this morning. So I'll turn it over now to Bishop Carlton Pearson from Tulsa. Morning, everybody, or afternoon, or whatever it is. I am... Carlton Pearson, Senior Minister of the New Dimensions Worship Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Presiding Bishop of the New Inclusion Consciousness International Fellowship of Churches and Ministries. Um, my religious roots are Pentecostal evangelical fundamentalism, so I'm, supposed, I'm not supposed to be here. Uh, 
but I'm here to add my voices to all these wonderful clergy men and women who love God and love humanity. Uh, and I remember the words of G.K. Chesterton, the great English critic and author, who said, let your religion be less of a theory and more of a love affair. And so I'm here today because I believe in the American love affair, the common love affair we have with moral justice, with um, the American uh, inalienable rights for the pursuit of life, happiness, and, and liberty. And as Dr. Martin Luther King said in his famous speech here, I have a dream that one day this nation will literally rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed, that all people, regardless of race, ethnicity, or sexual orientation, are created equal. And um, as an American, African-American, I'm, I'm acutely sensitive to the stench and sting of prejudice and violence and bigotry. And I feel in my heart, as a married man with children, an evangelical fundamentalist Pentecostal, that gay and lesbian human beings in America enjoy the same rights as every other human being in this country. Thank you for that amen. <laughs> the Federal Hate Crimes Law, 18 U.S.C., Section 245, covering race, religion, color, national origin, has been on the books since 19... 69. Congress, once again, has the opportunity, indeed the imperative, to add women, people uh, with disabilities and members of gay, lesbian, uh, bisexual, and transgender community to the existing federal hate crimes law by passing the Matthew Shepard Local Law Enforcement Hate Crimes Prevention Act. Yeah. Yeah. Additionally, Congress must now act to pass the Employment Non-Discrimination Act. This is a wonderful and empowering opportunity for our nation to indeed live out its motto etched indelibly in the great seal of the United States, e pluribus unum, out of many, one, and I add out of one, many. As a member of the faith community in America, a sacred activist, and a radical inclusionist, I want to emphatically add my voice to what I believe is one of the most significant civil rights issues of this century. The issue of not special, but equal rights for God's same gender loving children. It's a moral imperative in every community in America. Gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people are our doctors, our lawyers, police officers, preachers, and politicians. They're school teachers, athletes, entertainers, shopkeepers, and farmers. They are tax paying, law abiding, God-loving and often Christ-following Americans who are and well should be protected on the United States Constitution. Yeah. I'm here to defend their right to the American dream dynamic and to encourage the United States Congress to help make freedom's dream an inclusive reality for all who live in this great country, the United States of America. God bless you all. Shalom and good morning. My name is Rabbi Denise Egger, and I'm the rabbi of Congregation Kolami, West Hollywood, California's Reform Synagogue, and vice president of the Southern California Board of Rabbis. I'm here this morning to support the passage of the Employment Non-Discrimination Act and the Local Law Enforcement Hate Crimes Bill. These two critically important pieces of federal legislation will provide important protections for gay and lesbian citizens and residents of our great nation. It is morally wrong to deprive anyone of the means to feed themselves and care for their families. The passage of the Employment Non-Discrimination Act will help gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people in the 33 states where you can be fired for simply being gay. Huh. Jewish tradition teaches us that we have an obligation to protect the rights of workers. There are many laws in our Torah that teach us of our obligation to be fair to workers. This legislation is about fairness and justice. Many Americans are surprised to learn that gay Americans can lose their jobs for simply being gay. In fact, 90% of Americans already support this legislation, ending workplace discrimination based on sexual orientation. In my 20 years as a rabbi, I know of individuals who have lost their jobs for because of who they love. This, of course, has nothing to do with how they perform their work obligations, but instead it is humiliating and degrading. It is morally wrong to deprive anyone of the means to feed themselves and their families. The time has come for Congress members on both sides of the aisle to join together to protect the working rights of gay Americans in every state in our union 
and pass the Employment Non-Discrimination Act. It is time for American law to catch up to the nearly 90% of Fortune 500 corporations and protect the working rights of gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people with the passage of ENDA, the Employment Non-Discrimination Act. And I'm also standing here this morning to urge the passage of the Matthew Shepard Local Law Enforcement Hate Crimes Prevention Act. This measure would add protections based on sexual orientation and gender identity to existing laws that target violence because of race and religion. It is important because it also adds disability as another category to hate crimes legislation. It updates present federal hate crimes law and gives local authorities the more resources to do the job of law enforcement when a crime is motivated by hatred and bias against gay, lesbian, bisexual, or trans individuals, or even those perceived as such. In my city of West Hollywood, California, even though there is a significant gay population, we have had our share of hate crimes. I remember Trev Brody, who was brutally beaten and has lasting effects from his attack. If this had been prosecuted as a hate crime, it, our local law enforcement would have had additional resources at their disposal. Jewish teaching says, Ahavta reecha kamocha, love your neighbor as yourself. We cannot always teach people to love, but it is our moral duty to protect one another from hatred and violence and prosecute fully those who would commit crimes motivated by hatred of gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, or disabled people. We are all created in God's image, but Selim Elohim, it says in my text in Genesis, our Congress has the opportunity to exert its moral authority to correct this great injustice. I am here today and I pray along with my colleagues that both houses of Congress will overwhelmingly pass these bills. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Reverend Bill Sinkford, President of the Unitarian Universalist Association of Congregations, representing more than a thousand liberal religious congregations in the United States. We come together today to support two pieces of legislation, the Local Law Enforcement Hate Crimes Prevention Act and the Employment Non-Discrimination Act. If passed, these laws will make a profound difference in the real lives of many Americans. As a minister and the leader of the Unitarian Universalist Association, I strongly support both of these bills. My commitment to civil rights legislation stems from my belief as a Unitarian Universalist, a belief shared by many people of conscience and many people of faith, that every person has inherent worth and dignity, that every person is a child of God, and that every person, regardless of disability, sexual orientation, or gender identity, deserves equal protection under the laws of this nation. Unitarian Universalists have a long history of welcoming gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people into our congregations and indeed into our ministries. Doing so has brought many blessings to our community, but it has also brought a painful awareness of our brothers and sisters' daily struggles against oppression. We have learned how a single violent act can shatter and intimidate an entire community, how the unfair loss of jobs hurts families and chills our ability to have authentic relationships with one another. Hate crimes not only impact individuals, they rend the very fabric of society by making whole groups feel isolated, vulnerable, and unprotected. The religious leaders who join me here today are committed to strengthening communities. Therefore, we strongly support measures like this hate crimes bill. We are people of faith, and we are people who have a commitment to the telling of truth. Much of the rhetoric in opposition to these bills is blatantly and inexcusably false. So let me be clear. These laws would not create quotas or force churches to hire people who do not share their religious views. These laws will not criminalize free speech or impede religious expression in any way. These laws do not undermine a single constitutional right. In fact, the contrary is true. If passed, the Employment Non-Discrimination Act and the Local Law Enforcement Hate Crimes Prevention Act would strengthen our nation's commitment to freedom and justice 
for all of we the people. In the last century, America made significant strides in advancing civil rights, but we still have work to do today. We witness for the truth that discrimination based on disability, sexual orientation, or gender identity is unacceptable in a nation that prizes equality. As we work to advance this vital legislation, I pray for the many victims and survivors of hate violence and for those who have lost their livelihoods for being truthful simply about who they are. May we never forget that these two bills are about real people, about real violence, about real lives, and about real communities. Morally, there can be no excuse for failing to take actions that could prevent this kind of violence and discrimination. I urge Congress to make this legislation the law of the land. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Aaron Swenson. I am a Presbyterian minister and executive director of the Southern Association for Gender Education. In 1996, I also became the first known mainstream Protestant minister to retain my ordination following a gender transition from male to female. We transgender folks are vulnerable by virtue of our visibility, making us easy prey for people intent on taking their hatred out by violence. Murders like that of Gwen Arujo in 2002 occasionally attract national attention. Assaults and the fear of being assaulted, however, are a daily experience for tens of thousands of transgender people across the country. My faith tradition teaches that every single person is made in God's image and is worthy of dignity and respect. Amen. My denomination supports the federal local law enforcement hate crimes bill as one way our community can ensure this dignity and respect for everyone. The opportunity, opportunity to earn one's keep is a cornerstone of our American way of life and is often denied summarily to individuals whose gender identity or expression does not fit the norm. The case of Steve Stanton, city manager of Largo, Florida, who recently was fired from his job, is a heartbreaking example of how in most places in our country a person can be fired or denied employment simply for being transgender. The most insidious damage, however, is done to thousands of transgender youth who are often cast out of their families and communities. Largely unemployable, they risk homelessness, disease, incarceration, and even death. If nothing else, Fundamental morality should inspire us to pass legislation to ensure that everyone has the opportunity to earn a living. The sacred texts of my tradition teach clearly that God upholds the most vulnerable among us. And there are few more vulnerable than those in the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community. And among those, the T remains the most vulnerable. Now is the time to defend the security and dignity of all Americans and pass this crucial legislation. Thank you. I am Reverend Nancy Wilson, moderator of Metropolitan Community Churches, a global ministry started in 1968 by Reverend Troy Perry, a gay man, preaching an inclusive gospel that includes LGBT people. I've been a minister and an open lesbian for 35 years. My partner and I celebrate 30 years together this year. There was a time when gay and lesbian and bisexual and transgender people did not believe in America that we deserve to be free from employment discrimination. Fortunately, those days are over. 
and a younger generation now believes passionately that our hard-working, tax-paying, contributing citizens, we have the inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, including the right to be gainfully employed without fear of losing our jobs because of our sexual orientation or gender identity. Today, 90% of Americans agree with us. We've come a long way. Job discrimination is costly and unnecessary. Now is the time to end it once and for all. In my own neighborhood just weeks ago, Susan, formerly Stephen Stanton, lost her job as the city manager of Largo, Florida, because after a lifetime of personal agonizing, she came to the conclusion that she is transgender. In a blatant act of discrimination, the city leaders that had praised her job performance of 14 years fired her for coming out of a closet of shame and fear. There is still so much ignorance and irrationality when it comes to these issues, much of which is fed by religious biases. We are here to say that there are millions of us, straight, gay, and otherwise, who feel very differently. We see our religious roots and teachings as a call to justice, mercy, and kindness, a call to a civil society of mutual respect, dignity, and justice for all. We also come to say that hate crimes legislation is not about limiting free speech or about theoretical crimes, but it is about real acts that terrorize, maim, and kill real people in our communities. Just weeks ago in Polk County, Florida, Ryan Keith Skipper, 25 years old, was murdered because of his sexual orientation. Witnesses say that two young suspects drove his bloody car around and bragged about killing a gay man to their friends. We are here today for Ryan's grieving family, friends, and community, and for two young men whose hearts and minds were poisoned by prejudice and hatred religiously fed. There are still people in our country who believe they're doing God a favor when they intimidate, harm, bully, or kill members of our community. In the name of God, we rise up today for Susan and Ryan and so many others whose names are forgotten, whose stories may never be told or remembered. It is time for people of faith to repudiate religious-based hatred. It is hate that is un-American. And now is the time for America to be America for LGBT people. Thank you. Buenos dias. My name is Miguel de la Torre. I'm the Associate Professor of Social Ethics at Isla School of Theology in Denver, Colorado, and the author of A Lily Among the Thorns, Imagining the New Christian Sexuality. More importantly, I am a Bible-believing, evangelical, ordained Southern Baptist minister who stands, who stands before you here today because as a born-again man of faith who believes strongly in the Word of God, as revealed by the Holy Bible. My Lord and Savior, through words and deeds, has taught me to stand with those who are oppressed. Today, the Congress has an opportunity to redress some of the oppression faced by our gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender brothers and sisters. Today, the Congress has an opportunity to be used by the Almighty as an instrument of salvation and liberation because all are created in the image of God, what we theologians call the imago dei, violence committed against any one person is violence committed against the very image of God. For this reason, the two pieces of legislation before Congress are fundamentally an issue of justice. Will we create a society where everyone's basic right from harm is protected? or with certain people to be excluded. Violence need not be limited to the physical. <laughs> Denying anyone the right to work because of their sexual orientation or gender identity is also a form of economic violence. Every human has a right to work so as to feed themselves yes. and their family. Yep. Yet in 33 states today, 
A person can be fired for things that are very personal, but have no relationship to their work. As a Latino, I know all too well the sting of discrimination in the workplace. And for that reason, I have no choice but to be here today advocating the passage of the hate crime bill and the Employment Non-Discrimination Act. Now, some Christians from the far right will attempt to paint these as special rights for gays and lesbians, asking the question, where will it end? I will tell you where it ends. It ends in the words of the prophet Amos. It ends when justice rolls down like water and righteousness like an everlasting stream. Gloria sea, Señor. I am the Reverend Susan Russell. I'm an Episcopal priest and pastor at All Saints Church in Pasadena, California, and president of Integrity, the voice for gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgendered Christians in the Episcopal Church. It's a privilege to stand here today in solidarity with other faith leaders, with a majority of Americans who believe that the federal government should act to end workplace discrimination against gay, lesbian, transgender, and bisexual workers. It is an honor to represent the Episcopal Church, which stands with over 210 law enforcement, civil rights, civic, and religious organizations supporting the passage of the Local Law Enforcement Hate Crimes Prevention Act. And I thank you for this opportunity to witness to the core values I hold dearest as an Episcopal priest and as an American citizen. My son Jamie is currently serving on active duty in Iraq. One of the core American values he was raised to embrace and he understands himself to be defending is our pledge as a nation of liberty and justice for all. I believe these important pieces of legislation will help move us as a nation to realize that dream, the dream of liberty and justice, my son, and so many other brave Americans in harm's way as we speak are defending and have sworn to protect. We are not yet that nation when the liberty to walk safely down the streets of America protected from bias-motivated violence is not yet available to all Americans. Passing the Local Law Enforcement Hate Crimes Prevention Act will bring us one step closer to liberty for all. We are not yet that nation when in 33 states a hard-working American can lose their job just for being gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgendered. Passing the Employment Non-Discrimination Act will bring us one step closer to justice for all. One of the primary tenets of all religious faiths is to love your neighbor as yourself. And as a Christian, I follow a Lord Jesus who called us to minister unto the needs of the least of these as we live out our call to do justice and love mercy. These are the traditional Christian values I stand here and claim on behalf of bisexual, transgendered, gay, and lesbian Americans today. Martin Luther King Jr. famously said that justice deferred is justice denied, extending hate crimes protection to include gender orientation, sexual orientation, and gender identity is the right thing to do, and now is the right time to do it. Ending workplace discrimination is the right thing to do, and now is the time to do it. Thank you. My name is Charles Bouchard. I'm president and associate professor of moral theology at Aquinas Institute of Theology in St. Louis. I'm here today to support the efforts of the Human Rights Campaign to eliminate workplace discrimination and hate crimes based on gender or sexual orientation. Documents issued by the Vatican worldwide to Catholics worldwide, as well as pastoral letters issued by individual bishops and conferences of bishops, including the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops here in Washington, repeatedly affirm that as persons, gays and lesbians have the right, the same rights to work, 
housing and freedom from violence as, other, uh, as every other citizen. The church has condemned every single instance of violence in malice and speech. Such violence reveals a kind of disregard for others which endangers the most fundamental principles of a healthy society and deserves condemnation from its pastors wherever it occurs. Unfortunately, censure by pastors is sometimes not enough. In some cases, victims of violence or discrimination must have recourse to legal protection. This is why I encourage members of our Congress to affirm the Employment Non-Discrimination Act and the Matthew Shepard Local Law Enforcement Hate Crimes Prevention Act. These two pieces of legislation do not create special rights. They do not endorse any lifestyle and they do not interfere with legitimate religious beliefs about moral behavior. They simply offer legitimate and appropriate legal protection for persons who are victims of violence because of who they are. They ensure that workers are judged on the basis of their job performance and not on the basis of prejudice. When one of us is threatened, we all live in fear. When one of us is treated prejudicially, we are all shamed. No society can flourish without mutual respect that allows everyone to live in peace and pursue basic human rights like employment. The Catholic Church does not agree with every position the human rights campaign advocates, advocates. However, our support of human rights, including the right to employment and freedom from prejudicial violence, is deep and strong. I therefore join the human rights campaign in urging Congress to consider this legislation as one way to create a healthy and safe society. Thank you. My name is Peggy Campolo, and I speak today as an evangelical Christian. For more than 20 years, I have been an advocate for my gay brothers and lesbian sisters, not in spite of my desire to follow Jesus Christ, but because of it. Yeah. Not in spite of what I read in the Bible, but because of it. There is a verse in the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, that speaks directly to those who will be voting on the Employment Non-Discrimination Act and the Matthew Shepard Local Law Enforcement Hate Crimes Prevention Act. Micah 6, 8 reads, God has showed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee? but to do justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. Yes. Friends, there is no justice when men and women pay taxes but are denied equal justice in the workplace and equal protection under the law. The time for justice is always now. The time is now to pass both the Employment Non-Discrimination Act and the Matthew Shepard Hate Crimes Act. Some of my evangelical sisters and brothers sing just as I am, but mean it for all but my gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender sisters and brothers. The church, and certainly the United States government, should be for everyone. The church should not reject the gifts offered by those children of God who happen not to be straight, and the government should not fail to protect every citizen of our country, regardless of his or her sexual orientation or gender identity or expression. Jesus never mentioned homosexuality, but Jesus had a whole lot to say about religious types who add their own rules to a gospel. They add their own rules to a gospel that really says whosoever will may come. In the name of Jesus, I stand for justice today beside my lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender sisters and brothers.